I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars, and today I'm back with my 6x6 Overland Camper. Winter has hit the Midwest now, and last time I took this truck winter camping, it got pretty cold. To stay warm, I was relying completely on heated blankets and electric heaters. This year, I'd like to improve the heating in the habitat, and I want to start that today. This is something that came off of Amazon. This is a diesel heater made by the company Vevor. I haven't even opened it yet. Let's get it unpacked and take a look at it. Here's the diesel fuel tank. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using this with my installation. If I can, I'd like to use the diesel tank that the truck runs on. This is a much bigger tank than I expected it to have though, so I am pleased with this if I do have to use it. I got some instructions. Okay, there's a little key fob there. I guess it's got a cover so you don't accidentally hit the button. There's the screen. And then this box contains all of our miscellaneous bits and bobs. All the pipes, hoses, clamps, wires, connectors. Just flipping through the instructions real quick. These might not be the clearest instructions in the world. But we'll see. The picture on the front looks nothing like what I received. But I think I did get what I ordered. Oh dear, I've already only gotten to the first page of the manual. First it said, add gasoline, which I think would be a bad idea. After the machine is installed, check whether the phone is stuck. If it is stuck, it cannot be started. I don't understand. The red power cord must send out the battery. So already with the first three lines of these instructions, I can tell that this is not going to be of much use. But the one useful thing that I did learn is that this is the normal orientation of the heater and I can rotate it 90 degrees this way or have it oriented this way. I cannot mount it upside down like this. So it looks like the first thing I need to do is remove this old heater. Now I've removed the air duct, the wiring, the fuel line, and then the perimeters of this white plate, and then also undone the exhaust, took a bit of shaking to get the two pieces loose here. Also took off the bolts here, and I think it's ready to take out as a unit now. It did slide off as one complete unit, a little wasp nest over here. I don't know if this will come loose now. I think it's... I just got the exhaust pulled out. A bunch of stuff fell out. Acorns, things like that. It's looking... A whole bunch of stuff in there. But look at that. It looks like that is clear plugged up and I wonder if that's why this wasn't working in the first place. One thing that I never realized this lever down here changes whether you want to recirculate the air from the box or if you want to draw fresh air in from outside so you can move this door either way where it blocks the whole the intake from the outside world and then it would open this side over here and draw it from the box instead. I have to say, even though this is about the size of the new one, this one weighs considerably more. Probably four or five times what the new one weighs. This is what the box looks like with the heater removed. There was a couple brackets on here. They were welded on there. And then a band clamp just went there and held the heater on with a couple clamps. So I've taken the mounting bracket for the new heater Put it on there, got the holes cut up. This is the old exhaust hole, which I'll be reusing for the exhaust. That way it lines up with the hole that goes out of the truck. The new heater will fit right here, just like the old one did. If we look on the bottom side of that, this is the exhaust, this is the intake, and this is the fuel line. And then I'm going to reuse the exhaust cage. So it's been cut out here so that the new inlet can come out up there. So this will bolt back up there and this flexible exhaust line will run out there and then out the wall. It'll all be within this cage so that you can't burn yourself. 
and then I'll have the hose for the intake coming out of there and going back up into the air box that the original one used. And as for the fuel line, I guess I'll just have to have it come out of the cage somewhere. Not sure exactly which direction I want to go with that or where I want to mount the fuel pump. But now I have enough of this modified that I can mount this back up on the wall, get the heater bolted in, and then we can kind of figure out where to go from there. The heater is bolted back up now. The air inlet hose is going to be up there in the box, drawing in the air when, where it did from before. And the hot air exiting the box will go up through the hose, go to the rear. And then the kit came with these smaller hoses that I can put on here and direct them down or uh, to the side somewhere to so that I'm getting air blowing in multiple directions here. Here's the exhaust and how this is going to work. I'm going to have to cut this off so that this can go into there. It just can't be quite as long as it is right now because it won't fit completely into that stack. And then once this is cut to stick inside that hole quite a bit, I'm going to put the bulkhead connector back on. This was mounted inside the wall there. This is the actual part of the original exhaust pipe. This hole has been welded shut on this side. So I'll drill the hole big enough for this pipe to go in through it and then weld the pipe to it so that there's a good seal here again. And then it's just going to exhaust right out the original exhaust pipe. And then once the exhaust pipe is cut, the cage can go back up and it will block anyone from being able to touch the hot exhaust or anything else touching the hot exhaust. And that will be all caged off. There's the exhaust cut to fit through there. I'll have to bend it up a little more to get it centered in there. But now I can mark it and weld that to the bulkhead piece. Now you can see how this is going to work. I've cut the exhaust pipe shorter. Now it barely fits through here. So I can stick it through where it needs to be, mark it, and then weld it to this plate. And then I've got a nice airtight seal and all the exhaust should go out the exhaust pipe for the original heater and not come back in the cabin. About how the exhaust done, you can see that's welded clear around there to seal that up. So I just need to keep fastening it down and get the cage on. I think that came out pretty good. The green line you see coming down, this one right here, this is the fuel line. So the only thing left now is to hook up the fuel, hook up the electricity, and it should be good to go. The install is almost done now. I'll tidy up some of the wiring later. There's where I put the fuel pump because that bulkhead right there, that's where the diesel is going to come through the wall, get pumped up there, and then over to the heater. I mounted the controller up here in the front. Doesn't really matter where it is because it came with this little key fob so you can turn it off, raise the temperature, everything with the little key fob. So this is up where I can step in, turn it on if I want to, but probably most of the time just be using it off the key fob. Right now I've run into a little issue where I can't get any diesel to come out of here. I might be, I might need more diesel in my tank. I might be below where the standpipe is going to pick up fuel because you don't want the heater to use all the fuel so that you can't start your truck. So there's a standpipe that only lets you draw so much to the heater and then it will stop. So I'll need to fill up the tank before I can test that again. This pump should pump through the original pump so I don't have to have the original pump on. But the original pump does still run. I can run that off a of 24 volt or 110. And if I wanted to use the original pump to prime the system, I just flip this to on and it starts pumping and if this were working, diesel should have been coming out of that hose right now. So for now, I just have a longer hose and this goes down to the diesel tank that came with it until I can troubleshoot that or just drive the truck down and fill up with more diesel. That should be a simple fix. So let's test the rest of it now. The instructions are really, really bad. But when you first get the system installed, you need to hold down these two buttons and that runs your pump. That will prime the system, so keep doing that. And it, and it may take, it could even take five to 10 minutes before you've got 
all your fuel up and up to the heater. Just keep holding them down for as long as you want the pump to run. Then let go. The pump will run a few times and then shut off. Now we're ready to fire it up. Hold down the power button. There we go. There's six levels of heating. I'll turn it on to high. It's going to run the fan for a little bit. I can hear the flame has ignited. But once it starts to warm up enough, we should hear the fan kick on and start blowing a lot. pump pumping. Starting to ramp up. It's not blowing out a lot yet. I see a few air bubbles moving still there. Blowing hot air now. Quite a lot of it. We come to the outside of the truck. This little chimney right here, that's the exhaust for the heater. You can hear the air coming out of that. The smoke is hardly visible. Seems to be burning pretty clean. So I'm really impressed with that. It's completely up to speed now. It's blowing really hot air out of there. I would say the fan is the loudest part. I've heard a lot of people talk about how loud their pump is. I think that's because they're getting air or they have it mounted incorrectly. Mount it at least 30 degrees or greater. That way you're not getting air developing inside the pump. The instructions did show several different displays that you can get for these. And these are available in both 12 and 24 volt. Some of the units you can choose whether they're running on 12 or 24. This one is 12 volts only. So be careful when you're ordering them. You see there's a bunch of different screens. I think they just make these Chinese heaters and they use the same equipment for a bunch of different configurations. And then when you get to the model that I have, instructions uh, get a little bit worse. It's like they just kind of pasted this at the end of the regular manual. This one is pretty basic but it does have a timer so you can set it for a certain amount of time and it, it will automatically turn off. Let's turn it off now. So we'll hold down the power button again. That's turning off. The fan is going to have to run for a while to cool everything down. So don't worry about it if you select off and you still hear it running. It is going to run like this for a little bit until it's cooled down enough that it can turn itself completely off. I think that about covers it today. These Chinese diesel heaters are cheap and probably the best way to heat your vehicle in the winter. I did buy some other ways to heat this habitat up, so I'd like to go out, do some winter camping, and test some of them, see how well they work. And if you'd like to get one of these units, I have a link in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.